Let's go to the tail of the tape. Heavyweight Championship of the World. Anthony Joshua is 31. Pulev is 39. 6'6", 241. And Joshua, remember, dropped 11 pounds in the six months between the first and second Andy Ruiz fight. He's 241 tonight, four pounds heavier than the rematch with Ruiz. Pulev, a solid 6'4", 240. But Joshua, the taller man and the rangier man in the ring tonight. Sergio, your thoughts here on Pulev and being able to try to change the equation at this point in his career. Well, it's going to be very difficult at 39 years old, but he seems relaxed, confident. I mean, he was very happy to the point where he was joking, but he's still serious. He knows his business. Uh, you know, he has that Olympic pedigree as well. He's strong, difficult style, but it's going to be very tough for him tonight with a motivated Joshua. You know, the jab is Pulev's best weapon. There you see a three-inch reach disadvantage for Pulev, but he has got to use that over and over tonight. His best chance of winning is to land that jab consistently and follow with right hands. We are going backstage, I'm told. This is the corridor where we're awaiting Kubrat Pulev. And Pulev has uh, not come out as of yet. And now it's time. There he is. He's been composed all through fight week. This is the big moment. Experienced. Looks extremely calm. As you mentioned, fellas, strong and straightforward, which is both a strength and a weakness. Rarely goes to the body. Gives you the straight one-two. But he is a real man in there. At 39 years old, and he is big and strong, he might be predictable, but he is going to present some issue at some point, you would think, to Anthony Joshua, unless Joshua is just going to box and stay at bay. No, if he's going to create issues, it's going to be in the first half of the fight because we asked uh, Huey Fury, who, who fought Kubrat Pulev, he said, no, his energy saps in the second uh, uh, part of the fight, so expect Pulev to start strong in the first five. We await the music for Kubrat Pulev and he'll be able to make his entrance. I thought that was like a spinal tap moment. Did he go to the right spot? Let him in, let this man in. Hey, you don't have your credential. No, let me in, I'm fighting. He's the guy with the <laughs> robe on. Oh, we're still waiting for the music, waiting for Pulev to enter. Pulev, again, had his shot at the heavyweight championship six years ago against Vladimir Klitschko, dropped by a left hook in the first round, one minute in. Dropped by a hook in the third, a hook in the fifth. He stayed and slugged with Klitschko, but at range, Dr. Steelhammer took care of business. Pulev says he is a very different fighter. He's learned from his mistakes. He has waited a long time, Chris, for this shot. Between the shutdown, the pandemic, he's been the WBO mandatory for a long period of time. Yeah, usually you take issue with some of these mandatory challengers, some of the run worthy. Pulev is worthy as a challenger. Is he worthy as an opponent? All right, let's go to the ring now, and David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to London, England. It's now time for the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the Unified Heavyweight Championship of the World. Now, Set to make his ring walk. Please welcome the challenger, Kubra, the Cobra Pulev.
set to make his ring walk, the reigning, defending, unified heavyweight champion of the world, AJ Anthony Joshua. He specifically trained to beat Ruiz the second time and fought that way. So there is a mission for Joshua. He knows what he's doing Ladies in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome.
welcome to the SSE Arena Wembley here in London, England. We are live on Sky Sports Box Office and The Zone for the featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the Unified Heavyweight Championship of the World. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing in association with Mr. Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated, Epic Sports and Entertainment, and 258 Management. We're proudly sponsored by William Hill, StubHub, Lannistar, AO.com, and JD Sports. This bout is sanctioned under the auspices of the British Boxing Board of Control the steward in charge and supervisor, Mr. Charles Giles, the World Boxing Association, the president, Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, the International Boxing Federation, the president, Daryl J. Peoples, the World Boxing Organization, president, Francisco Paco da Carcel, and the International Boxing Organization, the president is Ed Levine. Introducing your three judges scoring this world title contest from ringside, from England, Phil Edwards, from Bulgaria, Jordan Ezekiel, and from Italy, Matteo Montella. Your timekeeper from England is Stephen Pucci, and at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring from South Africa, referee Dion Duarte. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the four corners of the world, to the four corners of this ring, right here in London, England. This is it. The time has come. The fight starts now! <laughs> Introducing first, the challenger. He's fighting out of the red corner with his head trainer, Eben Kaysen. He wears the red trunks and stands six feet, four and a half inches tall. He scaled 17 stone, 11 pounds, 11 ounces. His professional record, 28 victories against one defeat. He has 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Coming out of Sofia, Bulgaria, here is the former European, IBF International, and WBA Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion, Kubra. The Cobra Pula. Pula. And his opponent across the ring, the defending champion fighting out of the blue corner with head trainer Rob McCracken. He wears the white trunks and stands six feet, six inches tall. He scaled at already 17 stone, two pounds, 13 ounces. In 2012, he captured Olympic gold. And now, as a professional, in 24 bouts, his record stands at 23 victories, with 21 wins coming by way of knockout, against one lone defeat that he swiftly avenged in the ring. From Watford, England, he is the heavyweight fighting pride of all the United Kingdom. Here is the reigning, defending, Unified heavyweight champion of the world, AJ Anthony Joshua! Joshua! Before Andy Ruiz, Anthony Joshua was a seek and destroy fighter. Is he still that fighter? We're about to find out. Uh, that's the first time I haven't seen specific instructions from the referee. Dion Duarte of South Africa is the referee, and we're underway. No, uh, no instructions needed. Round one, heavyweight championship of the world. Anthony Joshua in the white trunks. 
Kubrat Pulev in the red. And it will be interesting to see if Pulev is able to change the equation early and test Anthony Joshua. Joshua, of course, big, fluid, determined, but he can be hurt. Rocked by Dillian White, Alexander Povetkin, and of course, Andy Ruiz, who's knocked out and knocked down by Vladimir Klitschko. So you can hurt this man, but he has quite the offensive arsenal. Early on, you see Kubrat Pulev, just like against Klitschko, standing in the middle of the ring, looking like he's willing to trade. Trying with the jab, tries to the body early. You're right, if he stays at that distance where, and I tell you what, Joshua looks taller than just two inches taller than Pulev. He is, he is longer, he's rangier, he's got a big distance uh, advantage. Another jab to the body by Pulev, returned in favor by Joshua. Pulev's best punch is a well-timed jab, and like he caught Klitschko coming in in that first round. He kind of buckled Klitschko with a well-timed jab. That's exactly what he's trying to do here with Joshua. Yeah, and I talked to Manny Robles this week, who, of course, trained Andy Ruiz for his upset of Joshua last year. He told me the key for Pulev was to time that Joshua jab. He said Joshua has an excellent jab, but it's usually straight to the head. Pulev needs to time it, then come over the top with that right hand. Yeah, Pulev, a very different fighter, though. Very different offensive skills than Andy Ruiz. Ruiz can bust you up in close. Pulev does not have that type of weaponry. What he has is a good long jab and a good strong right hand. But it's just much more conventional than that inside power game that Ruiz had. It'll serve Joshua right if he can aim that jab at the chest or even the belly because right now Pulev, you know, he has his arms open like that, but he's ready to jab just like he did right there. Joshua able to land with the jab here. One of the few punches landed in the first round. We only have a minute to go. Another jab just short, but Joshua trying to find that range. You know, that first round against Klitschko, Pulev fought just like this. He got hit with a left hook, went down, stood up, did a little dance, and then got hit with the same left hook again and went down a second time. Sergio, we asked you, you know, psychologically, how do you think Joshua is, and is it important for him just to establish some rhythm here early in the fight? Well, rhythm is important, but we're all curious to see what, how he's going to react when he gets clipped on the chin. That's what, you know, people are curious about. But right now, he's handling things right. He's disciplined, fighting behind the jab. Kubrev able to reach the face of Anthony Joshua, just pawed at him there, but trying to get a little closer to him. And then maybe exploited, although Pulev doesn't go to the body very well either. Long right hand, that's blocked. Jab, you can see the range advantage for Anthony Joshua. That's round one. And you wonder, will we see Kubrat Pulev now in the second round try to come up with something? Again, he's got to change something with his style uh, in fighting the younger man and the more talented athletic man. No, that's what it is when you're fighting Kubrat Pulev. You know, he's tall. He, has, he, he also has that Olympic pedigree, so he, he's used to fighting behind that jab. But it's, he's awkward in there, so you just got to be patient with a fighter like Pulev. A little more conviction with that jab from Anthony Joshua here to open up the second round. Takes a good long look. Pulev tries to the body. Waiting for that right hand. That was uh, loaded by Joshua. Couldn't quite uncork it. A tentative jab there to the body. And to our initial theme, which Joshua will we see? So far, Joshua not fighting with uh, an abundance of confidence. Not yet. And not willing to engage. And look, maybe that's smart. Early rounds of Pulev. But we'll have to wait and see where the champ has been. There's a jab to the face. As long as Joshua doesn't stand in front of Pulev too long to get timed, then he's fine. But look, oh, oh, right here, he just needs to 
not stunned right in front of him and then look for the right opening. And there's a combination from Joshua. Pretty much blocked by Pulev covering up as they begin to engage here. Halfway through round number two. Let's go to Joshua Buatzi, who is ringside. Joshua, your thoughts here in the uh, early moments of this fight? Chris is picking up. Um, it started off slow, I think. Both men wanted to have a look at each other. Um, they did that. We're in the midway through the second, head, ending to the, towards the end of the second, and there's been a bit of engagement. But as you can see, both men are precautious, you know, very cautious as to what they're doing, because at this level, man, you make one mistake and the fight can be over. But it's picking up nicely, man. Joshua, thank you so much. Again, final minute of round number two. Again, Pulev has an excellent right hand, but it is a long right, not that short, choppy right that Andy Ruiz threw that hurt Joshua in New York City. Good long jab there by Joshua. Now, you can see Joshua and Rob McCracken, his trainer, did their homework a little bit. They're throwing that jab, but that was the third time I've seen Josh try to reach around with that left hook that Pulev's been vulnerable to. And on Pulev's side, does he come with a plan to win, or are we just going to hear, hey, I competed at my best, I've got to be myself? Again, I mentioned like Danny Garcia last week against Errol Spence for the welterweight championship. You know, Pulev is a tough guy, and Pulev can make things happen in there and just be difficult, but will he win on points? I mean, very unlikely. No, I don't see Pulev winning on points. I think he's he, the quieter this fight is, the better it is for Pulev. Renee's trying to inch his way uh, uh, closer to Joshua to land something over the top. Able to la uh, block those shots pretty well. Well, the path to victory for Pulev is a steady and consistent jab. And through two rounds, we haven't seen it. That's two rounds in the books right now. A little uh, extracurricular there after the bell. Ready for round number three. Kubrat Pulev in his last bout beat Rydell Booker. And he took control about four rounds in, jabbed effectively, stayed busy. But Andre Ward, former world champion, was calling that fight. And I think he pretty much hit a, a good kind of diagnosis on Pulev. Said he showed no variation in his attack. Same rhythm, same cadence, same tempo. And so we'll see, can Kubrat Pulev be a little more creative here tonight and then take the chances necessary to actually win this fight? because these rounds are being scored, and we saw that jab, Sergio, and, you know, this could be an easy points win for Joshua if this stays at this low-level pace. I can see Pulev taking chances, but I can't see Pulev being creative. I don't just, I don't think that's his style. He likes to keep this distance. He likes to look for, for strong jabs and, and opens the right hand. But then the he's got to throw, right? At that point, then he's got to throw. He has to throw, but he'd rather catch you coming in. Uh, Joshua getting out of trouble. Moving his head nicely, gets under the hook as well. Weaves underneath. Pulev tries to get rough on the inside. Well, so far we've seen the Saudi Arabia version of Anthony Joshua. Is that fair to say, fellas? Well, I think he's. I think Joshua's being patient right now. Well, no, he is, but still, this is rather tentative. Long right hand. Yeah, he's fighting off the jab, and he's looking for opportunities that way. Previous iterations of Joshua, you'd see him crouch down a little bit, lunge in, look for those big shots. He's definitely fighting more like the fighter that beat Ruiz the second time. Gets under the hook again. Weaves nicely underneath, so good defensive skills by Joshua. And a return right hand. Good counter right. Pull of his hurt. Second right hand. That clipped him as well. Now he goes in for the kill. Pull of says he's not hurt. Screaming out. But Joshua, there's confidence. There's aggression. And this is where AJ needs to be a little bit uh, careful. This is exactly where, where he got hurt with Andy Ruiz, getting reckless, going aggressive, and going towards him. Beautiful right hands from the champion. Knocking Pulev around the ring. Hits him with an uppercut as well. Another uppercut. That hurt Pulev. Pulev's on the ropes. He's hurt. He turns his back. That's the second time Pulev turns his back. That fight could have been stopped. 
That's a knockdown, but that could have been stopped. Let's try this again, Brian. Anthony Joshua is a composed and ferocious finisher. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> uh, that's what you said against Ruiz. Let's see. Can he close the show? This is impressive. This is the destroyer that we saw through his first 20 fights. Pulev is hurt. Pulev on the ropes again. Turns away. Does he want any more? The uppercut. Pulev down on his back. Second knockdown of the round. Two knockdowns. There's 17 seconds left in this round. They get him back in there. This could end. Joshua showing the complete repertoire. Uppercuts, right hands, now a hook. Another uppercut, that uppercut has found a home. He is hitting him every time. And the round ends, and whoa, and that's well after the bell and unnecessary. Very impressive round nonetheless for Anthony Joshua, obviously. Brian, you made the point after that first knockdown. That very easily could have been stopped. Here you see Anthony Joshua coming in, Pulev lunges with the jab, Joshua faints, ducks it, lands that big right hand, and before Pulev can go down, he stumbles into the corner with his back turned. Sergio, I've seen fights stop because of that. That's all body language. That's a big man not knowing how to react to being hurt. The, that's a big taboo in boxing, guys. You don't turn your back, but that's instinctive. That's something that Pulev's not used to. When you turn your back like that, the fight can be stopped. We've Absolutely. seen it many times. That means you no longer want to continue, and the referee should save you. Now, I don't know if that's what Pulev wanted, but he was almost out on his feet. And then here's the second knockdown, beautifully done. Uh, the uppercuts are just gorgeous from Anthony Joshua, as he now can't wait to start this round. Come on, ref, let him start. What is he doing? He's admonishing them for the end of that last round. A couple of cheap shots at the very end. Well, but, but you know, to that point, you could take a point away or at least warn Joshua and, t and take a point away. I don't know if it matters, but he's right about that. See, that's the thing about a style like Pulev, where, there, where his hands are, hands are so wide, a clean right hand, if it's well timed, can land cleanly, and that's what happened there. Well, that was an impressive round. Look, that's exhilarating, and that's Anthony Joshua at his best. Big, fluid, he was boxing well, moving his head. He seemed tentative. We wondered where the confidence was, or at least I did. And then he opened up, landing his big shots. That was beautiful. Sharp jab from Joshua. Now he's snapping it out, followed by a right hand. Pulev is on shaky legs. He's a tough man, but he's been knocked down twice already. Can Pulev's only loss to Vladimir Klitschko, November of 2014. The blood on the back of the head of Kubrat Pulev. Well, that's what happens when you turn your back, Brian. See, that's an inst instinctual reaction. See right there, Pulev still has game. That, that's, his, that's his right hand, that's his money shot. He threw the jab and came up with a hard right hand, and that's his best weapon. So Joshua clearly cannot just walk to this man. No, it's a very smart strategy throughout for Joshua to keep fighting off that jab, look for opportunities to throw the right hand, because once he lands one clean, it visibly hurts Pulev. And again, I brought up, you know, this was uh, to that point, the Anthony Joshua we saw in Saudi Arabia. And again, there's a fine line between masterful and reluctant. But now in this fight, we see he is able to flip the switch and he went full bore for the knockout in the third round. Give him credit for that. And you have to remember when talking about Andy Ruiz, we're talking about one of the best chins in all of heavyweight boxing. So you know what you're getting into with that type of fight. Pulev now showing some resolve getting back into this fight. Again, he did not know where he was. Turned his back, somehow kept going, got knocked down on his back, took a late shot from Joshua after the bell. And now he is in back in this fight in the fourth round. About 40 seconds left. Well, so far, Joshua's staying composed. He didn't get the finish, but he is staying composed. And he needs to be on his toes, because right now, Pulev, he, 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 it was fight or flight for Pulev, and right now he chose fight. He's coming forward, and it looks like uh, Joshua knows that now. And he's going back to the jab, backing up, being careful. Look, at heavyweight boxing is a show. And the heavyweight division was revitalized when Deontay Wilder was knocking out guys with one shot, when Anthony Joshua was knocking everybody out. 
And then when Tyson Fury boxed beautifully against Wilder and knocked him out. So Joshua can make a statement here and lead to a true super fight next. He looks great through four. They, they become susceptible to the bigger punches from his opponent, not Joshua. Yeah, it's been a weapon for him, though, throughout the course of his career. Against Dillian White, he landed some big uppercuts, which I believe gave Alexander Povetkin the impetus to throw his uppercut to put Dillian White down. Round number five, heavyweight championship. Anthony Joshua in the white trunks, Kubret Pulev in the red. Brian Kenny, Sergio Mora, Chris Mannix here calling this fight. Got our full team led by Gabby Logan there ringside. We'll have full reaction after this bout. See what they're saying in London. But here we've had excitement. Two knockdowns in round three. Anthony Joshua putting Kubrat Pulev, the tough Bulgarian fighter, down twice on the deck in that round. And Pulev historically is not a difficult fighter to knock down at this level, but is a difficult fighter to keep down, as Vladimir Klitschko learned in 2014. Uh, I'm... I'm very surprised he's still in this fight. I mean, Chris, when he was getting rattled around, it looked like it was it was going to end. He was badly hurt. And I think Joshua knows that. That's why he's going back to the jab and, and boxing off the back foot, because Pulev, he has fighting on him. Pulev's coming forward looking for, for the right shots. Uh, Joshua, if he's thinking this way, I mean, it's unlikely at this point in the fight. I'm sure he still wants to stop his man, but that's a 10-7 round. You're winning rounds going away. You, you can win this fight by being smart and being selectively aggressive. Yeah, I don't know if I call it a weakness, but I had this conversation with Manny Robles. Rob McCracken in Joshua's corner is consistently telling him what we're talking about. Throw the jab, fight behind it. But Joshua's instinct is to be entertaining, to please the crowd. And that's what sometimes gets him in trouble. Well, remember the conversations we had in Saudi Arabia with, with Joshua in that we were told by McCracken and Joshua, hey, as an amateur, I was a real boxer. I can box, I can get on my toes, I can box. I just fell in love with my power. So now, do we see in this next phase of his career that the best of both worlds, the combination of his boxing ability and his power, that would be something truly special. When he's Good going hard jab and a right hand by Joshua. That just snapped the head back on Pulev. That's a hard, beautiful jab. That right uppercut will land again. That straight right will land again. But he has to be patient, Joshua does. So keep stinging Pulev with that jab. Keep him on the outside. And there was a period of time where most people in the world thought Anthony Joshua would never lose to anyone, including Deontay Wilder when Wilder was unbeaten. Right now, most people, that's a good hard shot from Pulev. Most people think Tyson Fury is unbeatable. The, the way he was able to beat down Deontay Wilder. A beat down here by Joshua might change the perception, and the perception sells, Chris, and would sell that next big fight, a super fight. Oh, vulnerability sells. Neither one of those guys is considered unbeatable. Both have significant flaws that begin with their chins. And Anthony Joshua was knocked out. Tyson Fury has been knocked down by a couple of guys, including Steve Cunningham, kind of a blown-up cruiserweight. So it's, it's an excellent matchup. Shot to the body, smiles from Pula, but he's been down twice and is losing this fight.
Here we go, round six. Anthony Joshua looking sharp. First fight since the shutdown. That's another part of it, guys, is that, you know, like most professional boxers, you come back, yeah, you're not just gonna be perfect. You've had months away, and that is not the way Anthony Joshua has wanted to fight. I mean, now, Kubrat Pulev in the same, under the same circumstances, but it's not easy to be at your very best when you've had several months off, and including a full year off. Everybody's been dealing with that, but certainly you can make some allowances here for Joshua as he gets back in the ring, having regained his heavyweight belts. Pulev has readjusted, found his legs. He's coming forward, and, and his best punch is a jab, and right there he lands it again. So wow, if he can come forward with that jab, he's going to have success, Pulev is. That was a good pull right there. I mean, he just put it straight up the middle and jarred Joshua with that. There it is again, just missed, able to slip. Joshua slipping nicely. Tries with the right hand, Joshua gets underneath it. Good head movement by Anthony Joshua. Jabs landing by Joshua to the head and body. And that's what I wanted to see earlier from Joshua, because that's going to bring down the arms of Pulev to land that straight right hand again. And now we see a little better rhythm and a little more confidence from Joshua. He's got his head up a little bit, but he's smiling, he's loose, and he has more conviction on those shots. And that's what I was wondering about Chris and why I asked about his confidence early. He looked tentative. Those weren't real hard jabs. Now they are. Yeah, he's throwing hard jabs and defending himself against that Pulev jab as well. We're not seeing Pulev get that jab off as often as we had in some of his more successful moments. Tries with the hook. Looked like it just grazed Pulev and the front of him. Dion Duarte there warning Pulev. Again, Pulev is 39 years old. He's in great condition. He's only lost to Vladimir Klitschko, but he's pretty much one-dimensional. And maybe we've seen that dimension tonight, and, and that's all there's going to be. But he's tough, and he's trying with the right hand. So Joshua has still got to be careful. Good long jab by Joshua. Joshua measures him, tries to get him with an uppercut, and actually holds the back of his head. You can't do that. You can't do that either. That's a shot to the back of the head. Now, Pulev is rough. He likes to bully opponents. I, I like the fact that he's doing that, because Joshua doesn't want to get in this type of fight. Well, he's got to try, too. Yeah, along the lines of, we're saying you have to try something. When he gets inside, if the ref isn't saying break, you can punch. And that's where he's got a, his only chance, really. And if, you're, if you're Joshua, you do want to start to try to time these Pulev lunges. He's lunging in with that right hand to try to land a big shot. If you time it, you can connect with a bigger one. And now a little dancing from Joshua. He starts to move. He starts to get up on his toes, flick out the jab, and that's the end of the round. The work getting easier for the heavyweight champion. Seventh round about to get underway. Anthony Joshua up on his toes. He's loose. He has two knockdowns already. Let's go ringside. Gareth Davies is our ringside reporter. Gareth, your thoughts on the fight so far? Well, I think Anthony's got uh, um, Pulev uh, way behind him on the scorecards, but I want to see the action he gave us in the third round. Faster hand speed, combinations. He's almost enjoying it in there too much. For me, he's letting Pulev back into the fight, and I want to see him go to work, and I want a stoppage in the next couple of rounds, because we know An Anthony can be vulnerable. So I think he's got to go for the finish, and he's show what a great finisher he is. It's time to get the job done. All right, Gareth, thank you very much. Gareth, a little bloodthirsty, huh? He wants to <laughs> see this end. Uh, I get his point, though. Look, Joshua has 21 knockouts in his 23 wins. Um, but I, I don't know if he's let 
pull it back in this fight. I think he's just winning rounds easily. But there was something particularly exhilarating, Sergio, about that third round. Joshua throwing his hands is something special. Sometimes when you get a knockdown early, it can work against you because, you know, the, the, the opponent that went down, he already went through the worst. So that's when he gets encouraged. And I think that's what we're seeing with Pulev. Just, you know, he went through the worst. He got knocked down twice. Now it's time for him to just let caution to the win and go forward. Chris, do you like the way he's boxing now, though, having, you know, with the knockdowns in the bank? I like the way he's boxing because he's going upstairs, downstairs, looking for that big right hand and that uppercut. Three in a row there right there. There it is. Four. There it is. Putting his foot on the gas now. There was a little something extra on that right hand. Then Pulev lands with an uppercut. You, you know, if I'm the referee, Brian, that's like the tenth rabbit punch that Kubrat Pulev yeah. has thrown to the back of the head of Anthony Joshua. At some point, there's got to be a stronger warning. Yeah, a warning, you know, during the round. You, you can do that. He has not had real, a real control of this fight, really, from the very start when he didn't give instructions. It's very puzzling when you have a referee in there for the heavyweight championship of the world. Final minute, round seven. Again, there was that flurry from Anthony Joshua in this round. Beautiful scoring shots and throwing that vicious uppercut multiple times trying for damage. See, there you go. Jo Joshua finally jabbing downstairs to the body. That's what's going to set up the right hand that started that combination earlier in the round. And by the way, just to, to finish that thought earlier, that was Rocky IV, that music, right? The, yes, it in was. In the heat of the moment or whatever, Survivor, right? Called it. Nice right hand by Pula. Yeah, Pula jumping in with the right. And there was multiple entrance music as well between Pulev and Joshua. They put on a big show, but you still got to prove it in the ring. Kubrat Pulev, longtime IBF mandatory challenger. Again, just one pro loss, and that's to Vladimir Klitschko during Klitschko's long reign. Durable, strong, but can he win? I don't know if he's taken a round. Every time Joshua throws that, that jab to the chest, that's to, to the, the torso, mm. it lands. Now, that's after the bell, too, and the referee says nothing. See, there you go. That's the jab that sets up that right hand right there. right hand and if you're Joshua and his corner you have to be telling him watch for that time throw a shot of your own let him walk right into it the yeah, pull-up is very solid I, we should just I mean we've been talking about that all night if you're just joining us he has an excellent amateur foundation he was a European amateur champion Bulgarian Olympian in 2008 as a professional 28 and 1 he has not set the world on fire but he is strong and durable now he's in the eighth round but this is his chance at the heavyweight championship can he come up with something because at this point he's going to have to stop anthony joshua i think points now are, are gone for him as an option sergio what, what would you tell pula but Pulev needs to be a little bit more aggressive obviously if he wants to win this fight i mean his best punch is the jab so double and triple that jab all right so now duarte is going to talk to both fighters well you've got to warn them specifically because I think Pulev has answered back because he got hit late. And, and even in that instance, Pulev didn't try to cheap shot Joshua. He had a chance. He landed that right hand. Good right hand by Pulev here in the eighth. Joshua had his, has his head up in the air a little high. And he's also pawing at Pulev's jabs. Whenever you get a fighter pawing at jabs, you fake a jab and come around that, that guard with a left hook. Pulev now smells a little weakness in Joshua. Not much, but it could be his big chance. Again, Joshua coming in in tremendous condition, 241 pounds. That's just four pounds heavier than he was in Saudi Arabia, where he was ripped, where he was as light as he really could be. Getting back his belts against Andy Ruiz. We go three steady, four steady jabs to the torso. That's exactly what I want to see more of. Good work by Joshua. He's very good at getting underneath that hook. So, Sergio, you wanted to see a, a Kubra pull of hook? There it was, but he can't touch Joshua's head. Yeah, but he has to be a little bit more athletic with it. He, he has to hide it with, with some nice throwaway jabs, then come around the guard. 
It's been a decent round, a little better rhythm here. Pulev able to press a little more and create a little more danger. See how he kind of came around with it? He's kind of clumsy with it, Pulev is, with that left hook. He needs to be a lot more athletic with it. Final minute, round number eight. And we're starting to mix it up a little bit more. Joshua missing with the uppercut. The chant going up here in London, just like old times. Let's go ringside to Natasha Jonas. Natasha, what are your thoughts on Joshua right now? Yeah, he's doing exactly what I, th I thought he would. Um, what, he's, what his plan was is to be disciplined, be smart and box clever, and that's what he's doing. He's going to take the chances when they come, um, but he's sticking to the plan. That was the game plan all along. Tasha, thank you very much. Yeah, selectively aggressive, and it's good to see him slap it into a higher gear now and then. But uh, again, Pulev, consistent, trying to get back into this fight. Yeah, I'm not sure Pulev has won this round, but it's definitely his best round to date. I believe that's Floyd Mayweather there in the uh, in the haze. Former number one pound for pound fighter in the world who continues to campaign in exhibitions. Exhibitions all the rage these days. Did, May you, did you get in trouble once calling him the former number one pound for pound? <laughs> He's retired now, I can say that, can I? <laughs> well, he was retired then, by the way. Round nine, heavyweight title fight. Anthony Joshua doing a fine job defending his belts. He's got three or four of them. Tyson Fury could be in the future in a super fight unification. And Anthony Joshua has shown the ability to box in this fight against Kubrat Pulev and the ability to put on the hurt as well. Dropping him twice, dropping Pulev twice in the third round. Big right hand misses by Pulev. Speaking of which, Mayweather was one of the best uh, fighters to actually jab to the stomach and come around with a left hook. He would bait you in with jabs and catch you off guard and come around your guard. And he was one of the best and, and he still is. And Joshua now able to keep Pulev back with that stick. And Pulev now at that distance we've been talking about all night, where he's in a no man's land, the type of place he was against Vladimir Klitschko six years ago. And he is not going to win the fight from that distance. There it is. That's a stiff jab from Anthony Joshua. You can hear the corners a, a lot louder now without 80,000 people there. And you hear the, the calling out from both sides. There's that left hook. He is There's tattooing that left hook. right now. Chris, how do you have it scored? Well, I've got it basically eight, seven rounds to one in favor of Anthony Josh. I actually gave Pulev the last round a strong first minute. I thought he landed the most consequential punch, a straight right hand that moved Joshua back. But it is all AJ in this fight, including so far in this round. Yeah, and that's... I wouldn't be surprised if the judge went Joshua's way in that round, too. I mean, maybe, maybe not. But it's a good scorecard. Look at these uppercuts. Two of them landed. Three, four. Four uppercuts land by Anthony Joshua. You know, it's funny watching these inside exchanges. When Joshua throws that uppercut, Pulev doesn't seem all that interested in defending it. He's sort of allowing Joshua to continue to throw that straight up. You, you rarely see three in a row land. Uppercuts, anyway. It was like the end of that Gervonta Davis, Leo Santa Cruz fight because it's a dangerous punch to throw, especially if you're a big man. It's rare to see big men like Joshua throw more than one uppercut like that. Maybe watch that fight. I've never seen an uppercut like that. Because it leaves you susceptible. <laughs> when you, oh, you're... another one, and Pulev is hurt. Pulev is rocked, he's on shaky legs, and down he goes. That was three consecutive uppercuts that Pulev got hit with, and he is badly hurt. He is wobbling around the ring, ordered back to the neutral corner. 
15 seconds now for Joshua to finish. Third knockdown of the fight for Anthony Joshua. Right hand, and down goes Pulev, and that's it. And there is your ferocious finish. The count is on. And they get to 10, and Anthony Joshua has an emphatic knockout win. The champ is back and back in style. Taking the bow in London, and he deserves to. Four knockdowns of a worthy world title challenger and a big knockout. That is a momentum regaining win for Anthony Joshua. And a, a guy with a granite chin. I mean, Pulev absorbed big punishment and finally just went down getting hit too often and too hard. Beautiful knockout by Joshua. And I'll say this for Dion Duarte, the, the referee. As Joshua steps out already, he counted to 10. You're allowed to. Is he leaving? No, he's coming down. Floyd he's Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather. Look at that. So he talks a little with Floyd there, gets a little uh, post-fight advice. And with a small crowd, you can, you can do that. <laughs> I think Joshua probably appreciates the respect of Mayweather coming out to the fight. And Anthony Joshua with a big knockout win. Uh, let me just finish my point on Duarte. You can count to 10, and then you can always make an assessment. You don't have to stop the fight. It looked like it was all but over. But Duarte did the right thing, counted to 10. Yeah, there's no and there was no doubt. At that point, there's no doubt. There's no harm in counting to 10 either. We saw Jack Reese do it in the Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder fight the first Correct. time, and yep. it was the right decision to do it. And uh, referee here made the right call. You know, Pulev got, wouldn't get to his feet. That's it. And Sergio, just the right amount of boxing skill and menace and damage being done by Joshua. Joshua's one of the very few big fighters that loves throwing those uppercuts. But, but from Vladimir Klitschko to Kubrat Pulev, they land, and when they land, it's good night. Look, we saw in the Klitschko fight that Pulev had no answer for those left hooks. In this fight, no answer for the uppercut. Look at that, even a big man getting an angle. Not only did he land the first uppercut, shifted to the right just to land it again. And Pulev trying to stay on his feet, but just could not. And yet, look, another uppercut, and that lands flush. And Joshua continues to punch. This is exactly what Anthony Joshua needed. He needed the knockout. He needed to answer questions. Did he answer his questions here of heart, of chin, of mental doubt? To me, he did. Well, I think no question, Sergio, you're right. Look at that right hand. There is a highlight reel shot. That, that is Lennox Lewis Hassan Rockman no, right that, there. That's that beautiful. That was the very end of Kubrat Pulev. You saw for that last knockdown, he was sort of walking around the ring in a daze. Credit him for getting to his feet. But that right hand just detonated on his chin. Oh, that's, that's the coup de grace hey, right listen, there. Lennox Lewis or Tommy Hearns, the way that elbow snaps, look at how the elbow snaps. He turns the wrist, pop! That's full extension on that right hand. Doesn't wow. get more beautiful than that. Talk about Hearns against Pepino Cuevas, one of the best right hands of all time. And that, would, that just finished things as Joshua can strut away as a winner. And to your point, able to have an emphatic win that he can be proud of and take his confidence now and good sportsmanship by both men at the end of that fight both got after it and Joshua can take that confidence forward whether it's Usyk or it's Tyson Fury now fans will be I believe salivating for that fight look it was going if it was likely going to be Tyson Fury win or lose this type of win makes it all that much more anticipated. The aftermath here again, a very interesting Anthony Joshua jumping down ringside to pay his respects to Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather paying his respects by coming out to his fight in difficult circumstances to get out. You gotta, I, I think even Floyd has to COVID test. Look, so that, that's not easy. That's two lions in the boxing jungle, respect. <laughs> Referee Dion Duarte.
Duarte calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, two minutes and 58 seconds of round number nine. Your winner by knockout and still the unified heavyweight champion of the world, AJ.